Hello everyone, I am Atheus Anime and welcome to another Bleach Review. Today I'll be reviewing episode 4, The Cursed Parakeet. Roll the intro. <laughs> So, welcome back to another review, and uh, yeah, let's get this started then. Uh, the episode begins with these uh, three guys, uh, two of them being unknown characters, one being Chad, talking about this uh, parakeet, which apparently anyone who's owned them has come under uh, attack from random events, um, getting into a lot of accidents, believe, and there's led people to believe this parakeet is cursed. As they talk about this, they still beam starts to fall towards them. Um, and as this happening, we cut to the Hollow World, you know, we've seen Hollows travel to. And um, this one hollow seems to be talking about um, how hollows, once they taste a soul reaper, like eat a soul reaper, they gain a huge craving for it. Because apparently soul reapers taste better than reg regular souls, I guess. Sure, why not? Um, after that, we cut back to Chad and his two friends, where Chad has stopped the steel beam with his back. He's just, you know, st he stopped the steel beam, which admittedly is pretty bloody badass. When you think about it, and at this and at, at this point in the series, a little bit of a spoiler here, Chad is a regular human being. He's nothing special about him. He's just regular, kind of regular. He is like seven foot tall and immensely strong. But other than that, he's like on the eight, like Captain America level, I'd say. You know that kind of stuff. Like not superhuman, but like at the peak. But anyway, um, the parakeet then thanks Chad for um, saving him, and they kind of, and um, they kind of start to kind of get, get a bit of a bond there. So we cut to the next day where Ruki and Ichigo are talking to each other and um, it's here we learn that there's kind of an education system in the in Soul Society for becoming a Soul Reaper because uh, Ruki comments on how she was topping her class in Kido Mastery. Not Mastery, but in Kido classes basically. And um, yeah, and one of um, Ichigo's friends, Mitsu, again, Mitsuri or something, I don't know, I can't remember, I can never remember his name. He shows up and kind of comments on how Ichigo and Ruki spend a lot of time together and um, if they keep doing it, people are going to think they're an item, you know, together. And um, another one of Ichigo's friends comes along, you know, pokes fun at that as well. Um, they kind of have a back and forth about this. Um, help the whole time, Ruki's wondering how to get a juice box to work. Um, and this is when Chad arrives, he's like covered in bandages, like a big head wound, some hand wounds, of course, some from his back. And uh, he talks about, and on his way to school, a motorcyclist almost hit him. Um, and because of him being such a big guy, he was able to take it, and he carried the guy to the hospital. Um, and this is when the, he talks about the par they talk about the parakeet, and both Ichigo and Ruki are very suspicious about this because they can sense that there's like some kind of soul to it, but it's not an evil soul, so it's not so yeah, no, not a hollow, but there's definitely something wrong with this bird. Ichigo then talks about how he first met Chad. Um, he was in a, like an alleyway being attacked by some guys who apparently didn't like the color of his hair because sure. Why not? And um, he talks about how even when Chad came to his rescue, Chad never fought back. No matter how much he was beaten, pummeled, he always just stood there and took it. Which is kind of a bit, a bit admirable. Um, we then cut to Ichigo's house, where um, we find out that Ichigo's dad, Ishin, is a doctor. Um, and that his two young, young sisters, like nurses, help out. Um, and they're in a bit of a rush, a bit of a panic, because a car accident recently happened close by, but this doesn't really pertain to much. Um, get a bit of a funny scene where Ichigo's dad is like, Ichigo, just go away, you can't help it, because of course Ichigo probably sucks the medical care. Um, but then, Chad, Chad is brought in by Kari and Yuzu, who are like, Dad, this guy's kind of fucked. Um, and they begin to examine Chad, and he's got this huge, like, claw -like wound on his back. Well, not really a claw wound, but like a, a big mark, as if like a big paw print, like a spiky one. It, it's kind of weird, you won't be seeing an image, of course, why am I, why am I describing this to you? Um, but Chad's like, oh, it's fine, I'm good, I'm good. He tries to leave, but collapses, most likely due to blood loss, as Ish Ish um, Ishin points out. It also seems to be with, with this bird, Karin is noticeably shocked and scared by the bird for some unknown reason. Uh, we then see in Ichigo in his room with Ruki, and Ruki does point out that the wound is most likely caused by a hollow. So we cut to the next day, where we find uh, Karin is sick and Chad has disappeared. Um, Ruki and Ichigo begin to look for Chad, but um, they can't find him anywhere. Ruki explains that um, Hollow's going to this kind of like intermediate world between, I guess, I guess it's meant to be the Hollow world, but basically while they're there, they cannot be detected, which means until uh, it comes out to attack, Ichigo does point this out, they won't be able to find the Hollow. And Ichigo is kind of annoyed by this, but they come to the idea, well, if we can't find Chad, let's try and use the um, bird's soul as kind of a, 
as a kind of way to detect it. Ruki says this is, this is impossible, but Ichigo tries anyway, and um, kind of like starts, yeah, you know, he basically says like, yo, know, whole like, you know, Dragon Ball key sense kind of thing. Um, cut to Chad where we have him and the bird in like this abandoned industrial area. I don't know why he's in a, an abandoned industrial area, but sure, why not? And the bird is just begging Chad to like, you know, just abandon him, leave him there. We move back to Ruki and Ichigo where Ichigo has found the um, bird's soul through the use of spirit ribbons. These kind of like invisible things that can only be seen when you're sensing for a, a, a being's soul. Um, and Ruki does comment that even like a cat, uh, not no, a high level soul reaper, I'm not going to get into captains yet, that's later. Um, even they would not be able to sense a soul like this bird, because not only is it a human soul, it's also being encompassed by a bird soul as well. So it's clearly highly advanced, which uh, if we'll learn later on, it's kind of weird that you should be able to do this, but yeah, we'll learn about that later on. Um, come back to Chad, whether he's being attacked by a hollow, which of course Chad cannot see, because you know he's not a soul reaper, he's not a soul, he's not spiritually aware. Um, he starts running away, but he runs into Ichigo and Rukia, and like, okay, Chad, Chad, stop, and Chad's like, fuck you guys, and starts running in the opposite direction. This is when Karin shows up, and is still noticeably sick and ill, and Rukia says to Ichigo, okay, take take Kari home, I'll deal with the hollow. Ichigo's like, why? Oh, I can fight it. And uh, Rukia, but then Rukia kind of brings the counterpoint that, no, Ichigo, I'll fight him, you'll be too worried about your sisters to fight properly. Take her home and then come back and help me. So as Ichigo's taking Karin back home, Karin talks about how, um, when she knew the bird, um, I guess because she was similar, it's kind of a weird reasoning, but, um, she could see his most powerful memory, and that's the memory of the of the of the um, soul's mother being killed in front of him, and that if he passes on, he'll be able to see his mother again. Um, and she like she begs Ichigo, please, please save the bird, please save him. Um, we cut back to Ruki trying to catch up to Chad, and she's complaining about a gi guy. I feel like I'm explaining gi guy, so I'll give you a quick explanation. Basically, they're like a they're basically. Uh, they're just their body for a soul reaper or a soul to inhabit temporarily while they're doing while in the human world to interact with the humans and such. Um, Ruki is then confronted and attacked by the hollow that was chasing after Chad. Ruki attempts to fight back and starts, um, I guess, stating the incantation to a keto spell. The first, I believe, the first incantation we've heard in the uh, series. Um, for at the moment, it's called a bakudo, but it's really Hado number thirty-three. So cut sweet. Or pale fire crash, um, and at first it caused him a huge explosion. Well, not a huge explosion, but a, a crash. A, 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 a smoke cloud appears on the hollow's back, seeming from an impact. Uh, Ruki's like, "Yes, my powers finally come back." But as we learn, it didn't do anything to the hollow whatsoever uh, because Ruki is still not at full strength. She's still pitifully weak at this point. Uh, we see Chad is wondering, well, "What the bloody hell? What's, what's with the explosions? What's going on?" Uh, the bird is like. Chad, don't go. It, it, it's too dangerous. It's it's a it's a big monster attacking her. But he'll you'll die if you go help her. Like she, you can't see it. He'll kill you. Please don't go. Don't go. You know, continuously begging him not to go fight him. But Chad leaves anyway. He, kind of like his his way of doing things. You know, he I guess he's one of the people who has an obligation to help people. We go, come back to Ruki where she's like kind of really angered by her weakness. And the um, Hollow says, "Oh, that's a keto spell. Oh, I I know that. I know that spell." You, you must be a soul reaper then. Well, I should let you know that I've already killed two soul reapers and their souls are mighty tasty. Yeah, kind of weird. It, it's kind of, it must be a weird line for them to say, but it's voice actors, voice actors. You, there's always going to be weird lines to say. We come to the end of the episode where Karin is reiterating the whole fact about the soul and just continuously begging Ichigo, please save this soul, save the soul. And Ichigo's like, holy shit, Karin's crying. She never cries. This must be pretty fucking serious. And then we're kind of like, a shot of Ichigo's shocked face. So, yeah, quite an eventful episode. Uh, we learn that apparently souls can inhabit other beings. I'm not sure at this moment quite how the soul inhabited this bird. I'm sure we'll learn eventually. We also get to see one of my more preferred sides of it, the key of, of keto spells. I love keto spells. As I said in the uh, first episode review, I kind of pride myself on keto knowledge, and I did make sure to do a bit of research. Just to make sure I got the keto spell right, and... As a side note, the keto the keto used in the first episode is Bakura number one Sai. Yeah, just making sure that I'm credible when it comes to this. Um, kind of weird that Rukia would say to Ichigo not for him to fight the Hollow. I can kind of get a reasoning, but um, yeah, I guess we'll have to see next episode if Chad can even help in this fight, and if if Ichigo will come back in time to save Rukia and Chad if they can't beat the Hollow. But I guess we'll have to just see next time.
I've been Atheist Anime. This has been Bleach episode four, and I'll see you. Yeah. Either tomorrow. I feel like maybe tomorrow if I want to up to it, but don't expect anything. But at the latest next week for episode five, a title I haven't learned the name of yet. I'll see you then. <laughs>